sees Sam and Oe are back with more London Detective Mysteria. Oh, it's like the wind in the game. I was like, what's the static? It's wind in the game. <clears throat> anyway, we're in, we're in Holmes' row. Yay! Um, we got there in the last part, but, you know, I just got to be happy about it. Anyway, <clears throat> the air was the same as any other autumn morning. It was refreshing, crisp. Its warmth had been on a steady decline as winter drew near, but it was nonetheless welcome as the chill was the first signal of morning's arrival. Meanwhile, I'm over here like, I might need to turn my fucking AC on. It's goddamn February and I'm kind of sweating my nuts off. If only I felt as refreshed. Uh oh. My lady. Whatever is the matter, my lady. You're looking rather despondent. Is what happened to Holmes still weighing on your mind? I can't help it. It's all I can think about. Perhaps so, but it won't do to worry so excessively. Holmes has denied all charges, yes. You and Watson have also testified to his character. He did. He says that for now, all that's changed for him is that Scotland Yard has him under watch. I had, in fact, presented the Yard with a truthful account of what I'd witnessed. And though both my and Watson's testimonies matched Holmes to the letter, they had yet to be entirely convinced. No doubt in their eyes, all rang false against the pistol found in his pocket. I could argue. I could argue and cry and testify till my voice was gone. But there was nothing in my power to sway them. You could stab them all. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, I don't really know what that would do you, but... Yeah. Good try. <laughs> Spacey's a little fucking crazy. Um, hold on. Hold on. I got... Ugh. I got cords and stuff rolling all up under my bouncy ball, and it's just making cre squeaky noise. And it's, man, sorry. I feel I've banged them over the head with the truth, but they're set on believing I'm lying to protect him. As things are, the only way I could convince them he's innocent is to find the real culprit myself. Prove it with irrefutable evidence. I certainly don't fault you for wanting to help him. Though I shall ask you not to do anything rash in the process. There's no telling what danger you might find yourself in. Plus... You're kind of an idiot, and you'll probably end up needing to be rescued, and I've shot enough people for you, okay? Especially if you're going to be in love with Holmes. I'm a little disappointed. I'm Pendleton. Wow, chill. <laughs> I ad-libbed a lot of that. That wasn't in there in case you're not paying attention and reading along with me. That wasn't. I'm just. I'm sure you can figure that out. I, you can figure out which part wasn't in there. I'm well aware, Pendleton, that he's in love with you or that I'm in love with Pendleton. You should be well aware that I'm in love with Pendleton. I raised my cup and inhaled the tea, now stone cold, in one indelicate gulp before realizing I had not yet read the morning paper. Oh, well, here we go. Am I correct in assuming there's bad news in the paper? What leads you to that assumption? Placing it on the breakfast table is part of your routine, but there's no paper to be found here. A new one was published, certainly, and you would sooner dismiss it than forget. There must be something written in it you would prefer I not see. How close am I? Close enough for me to say you grow more perceptive by the day. Now resigned to the inevitable, Pendleton departed and returned shortly with the paper in hand. I should like you to read it calmly. I know throwing it across the room in a fit of anger or shouting, What's the meaning of this? at the top of your lungs. Goodness, do you take me for a child? I'm a perfectly fine lady, and ladies would do no such thing. I'm as capable of handling bad news as any resp- <laughs> I'm like, it's going to be about Holmes, and she's going to do this. This is the funny part. As I had been declaring as much, I cast my eyes down toward the headline and cut myself short upon seeing the front page. Genius boy detective turns to crime? Below the headline was an article recounting the recent murder. No names were mentioned, but it took little guesswork to ascertain the culprit. Holmes was in the accompanying photograph as well, being escorted away by Scotland Yard. What? What is the meaning of this? Sadly, I know you all too well. And now, my lady, if you would try to stay calm. How can I? This article is making Holmes out to be a petty criminal. And so it is. And with this in the open, it's only a matter of time before the rumors spread. Pendleton then sternly looked to me. Listen well, my lady. Yes? I must ask that you take due caution in how you approach your relationship with Holmes. I'm not sure I understand. 
Truth or not, he will be perceived as a criminal by society. If you're seen as intimate with him, there's no telling how your image may be affected. And perception aside, this does not appear to be the result of him being targeted by those of criminal intent. We cannot rule out that you may be in danger when with him. Are you telling me to stay away from him? When he's a victim? I know how difficult the idea must be to accept, but consider your position. Your actions, your choices, are more than just yourself. They are the Whitley families. I just feel like your choices. Oh, Pendleton. Oh, you're making me nervous, boy, because I got choices coming up, and I'm like, oh, this is going to be bad. This is going to be bad. There it was. Whitley family pierced me as a dagger would a heart. He was right. As heiress to a grand legacy, I had an obligation to protect and defend our good name, just as mother and father had in life. I had inherited a priceless treasure. I had to defend it to the end of my days. I'm pretty sure the queen would be like, Holmes didn't do this shit, bitch. What? Let him go. Like, she seemed pretty cool, you know? She seemed down with it. Homegirl seemed pretty... I, I, I don't I don't know. I don't know cool kid lingo. I'm obviously, I'm just... Whatever, you know. She seemed groovy. She seemed jiggy. <laughs> I highly doubt she's going to be like, Holmes is a criminal. She's going to be like, what's the meaning of this? Let him go, you bastards. He's Herlock Holmes. Stop it. Anyway. Pendleton felt the gravity of his warning, but he knew my duty and resisted the emotional pull. His face held tense. I was entrusted with the task of raising you. As such, it is my responsibility to ensure you know your role as the head of this family. Your every action brings about joy and anguish, not only for you, but for every single person who has devoted their lives to your name. Pendleton, I realize how cruel this is, but know the reason why I ask it of you. Pendleton had supported my family in my stead for many years, and he'd experienced what it meant to know my position firsthand. Uh, there truly was no, no one more qualified to know such cruelty. I, in the end... I want to help Holmes. I do know, Pendleton. I know full well what you're saying is the right thing, and that my best course of action would be to adhere to it. I have no idea if that was the right... I Okay. I hate that there's a timer on this, because I just want to stop and think, but I never have time. Um, So, at least you can go back. But, so, here's my reasoning for that. I really feel like that's the right answer to be like, I want to help Holmes. Sweet, now we go down the Holmes route. Like, I feel like that's the positive for Holmes, whereas the other one is more the, like, you're going to go down the bad ending. You know what I mean? Like, you're right, the family comes first, and it's like, we should stand by our man. And by standing by the family name, we're standing by Pendleton. So I should have chosen that, but, I mean, it's not like we're getting a romancy part with Pendleton, as long as I'm but Holmes has done so much for me, I can't ignore that. I can't turn my back on him in his hour of need, not after he was always there when I needed him. My lady. Oh, Pendleton, you're so beautiful, I love you. My family is my pride, but what pride would there be in allowing a fair-weather friend to lead it? Mother and father never abandoned those in need. Would they not do the same, Pendleton? He's like, oh... I fucking, why do I love him so much? Every stupid face he, I can't. He's my weakness. Pendleton's like my kryptonite, and I don't even understand it. Pendleton didn't answer. It was Her Majesty, and Pendleton especially, who taught me the wonderful people my parents were. He would never be able to propose otherwise. It is true that their deaths continue to weigh heavily on us, but you push forwards regardless. Through all its troubles and woes, you've stood by this family. Well... When you put it so valiantly, I I fear I'm at a loss for words. You must know how grateful I am to you. You've chosen the beaten path to stay true to me knowing the difficulties ahead, haven't you? You have become a splendid woman, my lady. I concede. He's like, I am so good at child rearing. This is all because of me. <laughs> kind of is, but I'm just saying. His smile was wry, but there was a hint of happiness he simply couldn't hide. After finishing my breakfast, Pendleton saw me off as I made my way to the academy. An imprudent lack of discretion made it clear that the student body had read the morning paper. It seemed every one of them was chattering on about Holmes, daring a glance as they did so. Oh. 
Here comes the genius boy detective. What in God's name is he doing here? I'll say, why hasn't Scotland Yard arrested him? Okay, fuck all of you. You should know better. Like, y'all should fucking know better. Like, not even... Throws controller. Fuck this shit. Like, I understand they're making tension, but I'm like, come on. All these people know him, they should be like... Hmm. I mean, I understand being wary and being like, hmm... Is he innocent or guilty? Uh, but they shouldn't just automatically... The fact that you're supposed to be in the detective's course... You're all a bunch of douche weasels, and you fail. Because you shouldn't be taking anybody... You should be like, I'm going to deduce this myself. As a detective should. Not like, I don't know, I must be guilty because they said so. Don't be dumb fucks. I'm ashamed of all of you. Anyway. How am I to concentrate on my studies when there's a murderer strutting about? You mean a second one? Because... I'm just saying. <laughs> like, Some stairs were deathly, and not a soul could resist staining his image with suspicion. It pained me to see him being treated as an outcast. If only they would believe he was innocent. I mean, I'm pretty sure he was kind of an outcast to begin with, on his own, but... And still, my pain was nothing compared to Holmes's, whose feelings of isolation were as transparent as those uh, demanding it. Nerves determined to fail me, I nevertheless gathered my courage and greeted him with a smile. A pleasant morning to you two. Miss Whitley, it's beyond... Is it wise to spend time with us? The circumstances as they are, I can't say I would blame you if you turned the other cheek. Of course. I know it's written in the paper, but you're both friends of mine, and friends are meant to help one another in times of need. And why does this not surprise me? Can't believe Holmes is the brass to come to class. I don't know if I should be impressed or appalled. I'm like... That hair. That's like a Keiichi hair right there. Don't give me that bullshit. Don't, don't recycle that. It's what happens when you got all your celebrity from your father, I suppose. Even Scotland Yard looks the other way from time to time. That's so. I wish mine was like that then. Shame he's just a bobby. You there! Shut up! You can't say that about him! Go. Go, Disney Princess Jellyfish hair. Oh my god. Jellyfish Princess. Princess Jellyfish. That's what he is. Oh my god, that's the cutest fucking anime, by the way. Kurnosuke is like my favorite. I love him. Everybody needs a Kurnosuke in their life. I need a Kurnosuke in my fucking life. You should watch that show. It's great. Anyway. I watched it in English. I don't think I've watched the actual Japanese. I didn't know the joys of watching Jap anime in Jap the original Japanese when I watched it like a couple years ago. But anyway. <clears throat> Let them talk, Watson. It's no bother. Well, you didn't do anything wrong. You shouldn't have to hear this. And that may be so, but causing a scene gives them more ammunition to spread the rumors. I don't like this at all. It's terrible. I like his pout face. He's like, hmm, I'm deep in thought. <laughs> He's so adorable. I love our Disney princess. Be of good cheer, Watson. Once we close this case, no one will dare say a bad thing about Holmes again. Oh, God, it's only going to get worse from here, isn't it? <laughs> like, it's like, ha, ah, we already think it's bad. It's going to get progressively worse. And we're going to be like, ah, the anxiety, even though you know there's going to be a good ending. Unless we're on the bad ending. But I'm just saying, let's just say we're on the happy ending path. You know it's going to be a good ending and everything's going to be perfect and fine. And we're going to wrap this shit up. But in a nice, neat bow, beautiful Christmas, gorgeous, glitter, lots of tinsel and shit. But like... Like, it's going to be that whole time, ah, I'm so anxious about what's going to happen, even though I know it's going to, you know what? Yeah, anyway. Maybe, but I have my doubts. Well, no matter what happens, no matter what people say, you have an ally in me. So don't lose heart and let those nasty rumors flow in one ear and out the other. So don't lose heart and let those nasty rumors flow in one ear and out the other. That sounds better when you say it properly. Keep being yourself. Remember, you've done nothing wrong. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh! You know what it is? It's because we sided with him. So that choice, if we had said the family name, we'd be like, ah, it'll be okay, buddy. We wouldn't have gotten the love. Yeah. Spacey did the right thing. Side with your man. Stand by your man. <laughs> I mean, come on. That was kind of an obvious choice. But still, you never know. They could have just given, pulled the switcheroo on you. You're absolutely right. Funny how even a broken clock is right twice a day. Was that at all necessary? Like, I'm trying to be, like, nice to you, and you're going to make me want to fuck... I'll, I'll clock you, motherfucker. I'll show you a clock right in the face. 
<laughs> that was funny because he said a clog and I'm going to clog it. You know, ah! Spacey's funny. <laughs> We'd best count ourselves lucky to have such a brave one on our side. Hey, even at times like these, you show no fear. Upon entering the classroom, I noticed Marple addressing Holmes. I read the paper, Holmes. Hadn't everyone? It was a topic of choice for nearly every person I'd seen. You were like, no duh, no shit, Sherlock. I mean, Marple. <laughs> and then we have something in common. I'm certain you know what I'm going to ask then. You aren't the culprit, are you? What would you do if I said I were? Is it really so difficult to answer the question instead of being a contrarian? I would have called him a smartass, but okay, Marp. All I want is to hear the truth. From you. I can't be alone in that. All of us believe in your innocence, Holmes. Don't we, Faber? Of course. That's us. And Lupin makes three. Me? Well, yes. He, he is innocent. He must be. Holmes could never do something so awful. Uh, don't you think? I just really love it. The thief and the murderer are like, yeah, I know. Holmes can never be a thief. Yeah, I don't think he could murder people either. Right? <laughs> like, they would know. This is why it's funny. What? Why are you asking me? Oh, well, I, um, I was hoping we would be in agreement. This is... It's not, it's not me concern. It's really hard sometimes to do his accent. You just bear with me. It's okay. It's something, right? As if to illustrate his disinterest in more than words, Jack returned to staring out the window as he did so often. As he so often did, sorry. <laughs> you had some mishap, and now you're being left with the blame, I'll bet. You can tell us. Holmes. You're correct. They didn't commit that murder. And that's all I have to say on the matter for the time being. Any reason why? And my grandmother once told me that whenever someone who often chirps away like a baby bird suddenly stops... And there is always something more to it. Miss Marple, I don't recall ever being the type to chirp away, as it were. Yet, I get the sense you're being more obstinate than usual where this matter is concerned. I, can I just tell you? I love how glasses characters and animes and everything always, like, push their glasses up. I don't know what... Okay, look. I wear contacts more than glasses. But, like, even when I wear glasses, I don't constantly feel the need. I've got to push my glasses up. But they always do it. All these fucking glasses boys are always like, let me push my glasses up. And you're like, why is that sexy? I just don't even understand. Like, like Japan has a down. They're like, this is sexy. They're going to find it sexy. And you're like, it is. You're right. Absolutely. I love it. Although he's doing it, like, the full hand. And, like, usually it's, like, just the, like, the middle fingers. <laughs> like, Why? Who does that? Oh, God. I don't even know. I love it. <laughs> you know you love it, too, right? Like, I'm, I'm literally just thinking Diabolic Lovers. Like, watch the anime. It's going to be, like, fucking ten years before we can play that game. Um, Actually, there's a fan translation. So, at some point when I'm decent enough at reading Japanese where we can attempt it and still have the translation up and, like, you know, uh, back up because I'm not going to... It's going to take us six years. I was trying to be hopeful. Like, maybe this year we could... <laughs> no. No, it's going to be way too... It's going to... Mm -mm. No. But anyway. um, But, like, you watch the anime, May, and Reiji is one of my favorites. And he does that. Like, he pushes... And it's just like, why is that so... Fucking love you. He's the glasses asshole. You know I love me, the glasses assholes. <sighs> and the glasses nerds. <laughs> And, like, he's, like, kind of... He's not really an asshole. He's just... He's the glasses robot. He's kind of the robot, I think. He's very much, like, a little bit... He's a little bit the nerd. But he's way more robot. Like, I, I don't know how to human. Because I don't know how to talk to girls. Which is just fucking adorable. <laughs> Lupin is the glasses nerd. But, like, to the extreme. But then on the other side is, like, the little man slut. You know he is. Like, <laughs> And I love it. I love his split personality. This game is great. Anyway. Okay, we're going to read that. We're schoolmates, Holmes. There's not a soul here who would believe that article rings true. Okay, so wait. Is everybody in this school in the detective course? Or there's a detective course within the school? Because, like, I feel like there shouldn't be that many detectives. But then we're sitting in the classroom and we're like... 
everybody, and I think I've brought this question up and I'm just still not sure what end is up with this. Like, we're like, everybody, nobody would believe that, but there's a bunch of people that are like, look at that asshole. <laughs> He's a murderer. And you're like, but if you're a detective in the detective course, you should be like, hmm, I'm going to do, you know what I mean? Like I said earlier. So I'm just guessing they're not in the detective course. Also, Marple's friends in the very first, or whatever, Marple's chapter, chapter weren't in the detective course. Were they? So, maybe not. Maybe it's like, okay, maybe not. Maybe not. But it's just, I don't know. Anyway. If you've genuinely found yourself in dire straits, and then seek support. You have plenty here. Mr. McKenzie, Watson, and myself, of course. I know a KG would always extend, extend a hand to, uh, ham. I know a KG would always extend a helping hand. But your dad's a famous detective, isn't he? Why not? Ignore your advice. I'll do just that, thank you. Kobayashi had managed to say the very thing Holmes least wanted to hear. I pursed my lips in concern. If there was one thing Holmes could not, Holmes could not ignore, it was the very man he considered a lifelong rival. <sighs> okay. Sherlock Holmes is Herlock Holmes's Moriarty. That's fucking great. That's amazing. Come now, the last thing he needs is to be bombarded with attention. Let's all calm down, shall we? I moved to step in. As I moved to step in, Mr. Mackenzie arrived. Oh, good day, class. Please take your seats. And we did just that, feet shuffling and chairs being pulled this way and that as our ever-reliable teacher went to his own desk at the front. Holmes. Yes, sir. Thank you for coming to school today. I see no reason why I wouldn't. Perhaps feeling guilty upon Holmes's reaction, no one in the class sought to press him on the issue again. As class ended and students began to lunge, Holmes stood and retired from the room at an unusually brisk pace. It's gotta be stressful for this poor kid. He said it was because he was tired of the stairs. Still, I can't help but wonder if he suspected everyone would be happier if he weren't here. If any one student at the academy who believed the paper were to interrogate Holmes, then they would have an army comprised of his fellow schoolmates to contend with. Holmes no doubt knew this, as well as knew that whatever tension that might come about would dampen the mood. He has a bad habit of turning cold when he's having a rough time of it. Uh, probably busy brooding over what's happened at the moment. Holmes's problems were Watson's problems, and he'd taken to the current dilemma so genuinely that each new sigh grew heavier. <laughs> like... They should just get together, the two of them. Like, we should not be on the Holmes path or the Watson path. We should just let the two boys love each other, because I just... That's the best bromance in history right there. Do you think he's going to be all right? The senior and the junior bromance, I'm just saying. But, like, the seniors had a bromance, and these two could have a romance. I'm just saying. I suppose if he ever decides to open up. Uh, but that's not the way... But that's not the Holmes way. He prefers to hide it. He was the same way when we'd had our first fight. You two have fought before? Really? They don't. F you mean today? <laughs> like, I thought I'd misheard. Holmes and Watson had disagreements as any two people would. <laughs> it was literally in my head, like, as any couple would. <laughs> well, as any two people would, but I never witnessed anything resembling a fight. It was a right ugly one, too. It happened not long after we first enrolled and started living together. Watson began the story in somewhat wistful tone. In a somewhat wistful tone. Read all the words, Spacey. There used to be a boy in our class named Roy. He lost his father to illness shortly, bef shortly before, and he had no siblings. He was part of a family, and then, just like that, it was only him and his grieving mother. He knew she wasn't coping well, so he thought to ease her fears by working as a paperboy like me. Uh, thought he could pay for some of his education himself. And there's my half. Well, let's get going. You might use the back alleys today, Watson. There's a parade of some sort going on near Big Ben. Oh, look at Roy. He's so sweet. Wait, Roy's not the stabby kid, is he? He's not the dude in... I mean, I'm just saying, why are we bringing up the Roy thing? Roy isn't the guy in the cloak, is he? Roy isn't someone behind this. Mo Roy Artie. Mo Roy... Mo Roy Artie. <gasps> oh my god, guys! <laughs> That was, that was really hard. That was a hard stretch. I did. I hurt myself on that stretch. I pulled a muscle off. Okay. I imagine it'll be even busier than usual. So take care, all right? I'll come help after I've sorted my own deliveries. 
Thanks. I'll see you in a bit, then. Roy was good natured to a fault, but he was also clever. So clever, in fact, that he often rivaled Holmes's intellect in the classroom. And Holmes cared nothing, uh, carried nothing but respect for his talent. The three of us got on well, so Roy would often come, visit, come to visit our flat. I was excited, honestly. Holmes and I had never had a friend in common before. Uh, by the way, Holmes, I tried decoding that cipher, and I think I finally cracked it. Is this right? I'm stunned you were able to work out the rule and the numbers in such a short time. This is flawless work. Good show, Roy. You ought to consider opening your own detective agency. You'll have clients queuing up faster than you can take them. <laughs> I appreciate you saying so, uh, but I don't think I'm quite up to par with Holmes here. And I wouldn't have an assistant as capable as you either. Holmes is like, don't you take my Watson! That's what I just got to I'm like, huh! We're going to fight over Watson. Oh, sweet. I know. Why not come and work with us then? They always say two heads are better than one. <laughs> Three would be unstoppable. Especially since it'd be two and a half, Watson. We love you, but you're just... You're... Oh, Watson. <laughs> That's kind of you to offer. Thank you. Holmes is like, I didn't fucking say that was okay. Holmes and I had already established ourselves as detectives by then. Our early work was much simpler compared to now, of course. Oh, we'd locate missing goods, investigate on faithful husbands at the urging of their wives, and other small tasks. Yeah, because cheating bastard husbands is a small task. <laughs> but a certain frustration began to settle in as we noticed a deliberate pattern in our cases. And they were boring. Perhaps our clients thought us too young for anything truly grand. There are days when I feel as if we're never going to get a real job. I'm not sure how much more I can take playing an advisor for housewives. Our time will come. Oh, one doesn't earn a glowing reputation overnight. Yes, but we waited long enough. What say you, Roy? Roy? Is everything all right? Hmm? Uh, oh, sorry. You were saying... I do believe... believe Watson's on to something. You look rather pale. D do I? That's funny. I feel the very picture of health. Are you tired at all? Your mom's been in bed with a fever for a while now. It must be exhausting looking after her. Oh, well, yes, it, it can be. Come to think of it, it's been a week. Why not have Dad examine her? It can't hurt to have a doctor. And that's quite all right, really. Uh, she'll be up and about soon enough. And uh, she's doing much better since taking time off at the factory. Oh my God, you're not killing your mother, are you? And that does remind me, I have some things I need to do today, so I must be going. I'll see you two later. Wait, Roy! Or don't? I wonder what's so important. His mum, maybe? Doubtful. He would have said so if that were the case. He has been looking that way in the delivery route lately, too. I'm just exhausted. It could have something to do with his new part-time work at the pub in the evening. I hope he's not working himself ill. Regardless, if he doesn't want to discuss the matter with us, it isn't our place to pry. Quite. Several days later, Roy stopped attending class. He stopped working his route, and he even stopped coming to Baker Street. He had completely disappeared. He's in with the wrong gr- Mo Roy Artie. <laughs> uh, uh. At the same time, we were assigned our first major case. A robbery turned homicide. Oh god, it was Roy. The test was given to us by a relative of the victims. And they expressed impatience, expressed impatience with the yard's handling of the case, uh, stating that they had yet to narrow down a perpetrator, so they thought to bring up, bring the matter to us. What did they have to lose? Oh, Spacey! You should have seen me then. I was so pleased at the news. It was the very thing I'd been waiting for. The very thing that could put Holmes's name squarely on the map. It's like so cute. Spacey, you should have seen me. What, being a sidekick? You're a great sidekick, Disney Princess Jellyfish hair. Disney Princess Jellyfish. <laughs> Disney Princess, Princess Jellyfish, Jellyfish hair. It's like we combine three things, Disney Princess Jellyfish hair. <laughs> I love it so much. Better yet, I was familiar with, the, with where the crime took place, as the victim was an elderly gentleman whose mansion was along the paper route I frequented. And we were informed that his daily routine included visiting his ranch on the outskirts of London to admire his horses. Uh, the victim's driver attested to that as well. He was in the middle of boarding his carriage when the incident occurred. His testimony described a man with a cap pulled over his face suddenly appearing, and roughly handling the victim as he stole his purse. He then fled north after shoving the victim. The shove itself had caused severe head trauma, leading to a coma and his death in short order. It was Roy. 
I mean, what are we? What what point are we getting to aside from Ruba's Roy? Uh, crime was noted to have taken place in the early morning, leaving few witnesses to account for. Uh, this was what made obtaining leads so difficult for Scotland Yard. Good morning. You're here early, Holmes. I have somewhere I need to investigate, you see. Really? Is it in regards to the murder? Would you like me to come with you? Thank you, but I'll be all right on my own. What I need you to do is find the name of the paperboy who was assigned the victim's route the day of the murder. Just their name? I can speak with them if you'd like. The name alone will do. Let me know as soon as you have it. He's like, it was me. Fuck. We then went our separate ways. I did precisely as he asked, and was stunned upon finding the name Holmes wanted. Roy? He hadn't worked a day since the murder. Told you it was Roy! And I feared for a friend. What if something else happened? What if he'd been tangled in the murder? What if he did it? <laughs> oh, Holmes. You're... Holmes. Oh, Watson. You're so innocent. Before I could relay any such theories, however, Holmes returned to the flat with a report of his own to share. I had a talk with Roy's mother. By the sound of it, she was suffering from a lung condition, and it had recently worsened to where she could no longer eat. Um, say that again? You visited his mother? Indeed. And there's more. Several days ago, Roy called a doctor to their home, and her conditions remarkably improved with a prescribed medicine. She has no idea where the money came from. Holmes, you... You can't be suspecting... The timing of all events lined up perfectly. I've asked his mother to request that Roy come here as soon as he's home. Speak plainly, Holmes! What are you trying to say? Holmes's tone remained flat. Distant. Right then, I learned that even if the culprit were one of his... were one of his closest friends, it would not stop him from pursuing the truth. He would never hesitate. I believe Roy committed the robbery we're following in order to... No, we're following in order to fund his mother's medical treatment. Am I wrong, Roy? In the door doorway, Roy stood, lost for words. He was fixed to the spot, face growing paler, fingers still on the door handle. Roy, you heard our conversation. I should have known you'd discover the truth, Holmes. You're right, it was me. I only wanted the money for Mum's medicine. I never wanted him to die. I swear on my life I never wanted that. Watson's dad could have looked and probably would have been nice enough to like, don't worry, we'll work on a payment plan. I'm just saying. And that's all very kind to say, but what were you intending to do had I not called you here? Were you going to confess or were you going to run away? Use your mother as an excuse? You committed a terrible act and you still chose to hide. But I know what happened and I cannot stand idle in light of it. Holmes, you don't know what you're saying. You do know what you're saying, don't you? Like, you don't know what you're saying! You, you do know what you're saying, don't you? I deserve it, Watson. Everything he says is the truth. Holmes is never wrong. You know that better than anyone. Ever since Dad's death, Mom's kept working to look after me. Her condition would worsen, but she still worked. She suffered, and she tried to hide it for all for me so as not to worry me. Even at Death's doorstep, she managed to smile... I managed to tell me all was well. I mean, if you think about it, he lost his entire family, so, like, it wouldn't be like, you know what, oh, it's just my mom's time, and it's, it's like, I'll kill someone to get her sick! You know what I mean? Like, you, you can kind of understand the just psycho agony he was in. Like, it, yeah, yeah, I feel kind of bad for Roy, but I'm not saying what he did was right, but I'm just saying, like, I can understand how you would end up doing something so terrible, like stealing someone's shit. Again, not meaning to kill them, but, you yeah. know. I knew I should turn myself in, but I couldn't stop thinking of how she would fare without me. In the end, I let that rule me. I couldn't leave. Pitiful, isn't it? Yes, that it is. I understand you were thinking of her, but you should have known that as soon as you committed a crime, this is how it would end. I'd observed your every action, as a friend, of course. So if you truly believed you could deceive me forever, then I do quite strongly pity you. Well, you know as well as I do we didn't intend for the man to die. Is there nothing we can do for him? Result Trump's intention. Had Roy not taken that gentleman's purse, he would still be alive today. Turn yourself in, Roy. 
You can outrun a sentence all you wish, but you'll never be able to outrun your guilt. You're right. Of course you're right. What I did can never be undone. The grief I've caused his family will never leave them. And that will remain forever a blight on my conscience. I know what I've done, and I'll never stop hating myself for it. I mean, unless he was a total dick bag of an old man, and you'd be like, I mean, we're kind of better off without him. I'm not saying I don't feel a little bad, but I'm just saying. But he's probably a nice old man. He's probably a nice old man. He just wanted to go play with his horsies. Roy's smile then was somehow heavier than a frown. A smile bereft of any happiness. He was resigned. Oh, um. Uh, relieved. I should have been reading that in Watson's voice, and I messed that up. Sorry. The Scotland Yard will be here soon for a progress report. You can tell them the truth then. Holmes, too, was bereft of the passion he often secured from his investigations. He behaved as a machine would, from the deafness of his tone down to the coldness in his eyes. I couldn't blame you were you to look down on me as I am now, but I'm still thankful to have you as a friend. Without you, I would have condemned myself to living a life of fear and guilt. Holmes! Surely you have more to say to him! Can't we find a way to help him? Cover his tracks? You're a smart man. You can manage it. <gasps> Watson. Oh, you're not thinking straight, sweetie. Uh, please don't hate him for this, Watson. You're his assistant. He needs you to stand with him. And why didn't you come to us? We're your friends. Indeed you are, but that's why I didn't want to tell you. Scotland Yard arrived soon after, as Holmes said they would. Roy confessed to his crimes, and then he was gone. And that was the end. Well... You pleased with yourself now, Holmes? Oh! The look on Holmes is... The look in his eyes, that fuck... Oh. Oh my god. He, he is like staring daggers. That is beautiful. Certainly. Why wouldn't I be? I solved the case. And if it's all the same to you, I wish to be left alone. Don't speak to me. How would he still rattle off such things? With every word, I become angrier and angrier. That's enough from you! I couldn't bear it any longer. Holmes! Holmes made no attempt to, oblo to block me as I struck his face with all the anger that was building inside of me. Were I in my right mind, I would have realized it was impossible for someone with Holmes' gift for boxing to take the hit, but all I saw was red. No one is perfect! Everyone makes mistakes! You could have at least given him a word of- You couldn't have at least given him a word of comfort- Anything? He was your friend. Did that ever mean something to you? That's why he's acting like a robot. Because it does. It hurt. He's like, I solved the case. I solved the case. He is a murderer. I am going to leave now. Like, he's completely shut himself down. That's why he's all cold and, st and like, there's no emotion. He's, like, completely shut down because he doesn't want to... Oh. Oh. He just shuts his emotions down. Watson, like, just fucking throws his emotions like fucking confetti. And Holmes is like, I'm gonna stuff them all inside and pretend I have none. Aww. Answer me! His cheek had quickly gone from red to swelling, but his expression never changed. He took another swing. And he chanced a fist toward me, too. Ugh. Ow! What was that? Speak up! I refuse to believe you feel nothing after this. Out with it! Gah, you. Ah, damn it! I just, I love the bro fighting. Oh, boys, boys, stop. I'm not getting in the middle because they'll punch me. Uh, I was so angry at the time, but I should have noticed sooner how angry he was with himself. What ensued was nothing more than a lowly brawl between idiots. One blow after the next was exchanged. I'm confident in my stamina, but Holmes has skill married to his strength, and it wasn't any different then. There was only so much I could take before I'd met my limit. Perhaps I only lasted as long as I did because Holmes' mind was elsewhere. His composure was lacking, and his usual grace degraded itself to something unrefined. I'd finally given in and was on the floor. He was trembling, shoulders, legs, and all on his knees. I wanted... I wanted to help him, too. Am I pleased? How could you ask that? How could I be? Even his voice seemed unstable. A great unrest had consumed him to the point where he could no longer contain it. And no matter how desperate he was to win it back, the shaking wouldn't stop. He had swelling and bruising and other injuries. 
But more distinct than those was the distortion beneath the surface. <clears throat> right. What a stupid ass I've been, I thought then. It wasn't half as easy for him as I'd assumed it was. He'd chosen the hardest path for the sake of our friend. Not because he hated him. Roy was guilty. I was indignant. Yet somehow, the one who had struggled most from this tug-of-war was Holmes. Oh. Well then. No new cases followed that one for some time. Perhaps it was to our benefit, as we were hardly on speaking terms since that evening. It was... Only some time later that I was told Roy's crime had been deemed an accident in a court of law. A further investigation proved the push on Roy's part wasn't the victim's cause of death. Rather, he had fallen and hit his head as he made chase. Uh, the change in opinion was brought about by a certain someone working to collect information from what few eyewitnesses were present, including the carriage drivers. Although I was never given a name, I couldn't help but notice the connection when I discovered Holmes' investigation was to prove Roy didn't murder anyone. Try as I did to press him on the matter, he was re relentless in his silence. I must be off to take care of some other business. Would you mind if I joined you? Do as you please. Holmes was to visit Roy's mother that day. She was still recovering, but her symptoms had improved as an asto at, a, at an astonishing rate. Even in times of great illness, she fretted over her son. Roy did all this to help someone very special to him. He's now atoning for his actions and working to right his wrongs. I should like you to know how dear a friend he is to me, as well as have my confidence that he'll come home to you as soon as he can. All I ask is that you wait for his return. Please. I thought I knew everything there was to know about Holmes before then. He was strong in mind, logical to a fault, and nothing could stand to sway either. Hmm, nothing could stand to sway either. But Holmes swayed often. And he carried his weight in fear. He feared, he worried, he questioned his every decision. He secured his doubts in a box for only him to see, and though he wished to throw away the key, he continually filled it with more doubts still. He would sooner fill it until it was full to bursting, until the lid would no longer close. He was ordinary, much like the rest of us. But still extraordinary. I didn't know any of this. The way he's approaching this case now reminds me of how he was then. For all the pain he knew it would bring, he suppressed his feelings as well as he could and pushed forwards. It does sound rather like him. That silly boy, he simply can't ignore a case when it's right in front of him. It could bring him joy or sorrow, and he would still obsess until he solved it. Listen, Spacey, uh, don't tell Holmes I said any of this, all right? Of course, I won't say a thing. Oh my god, Holmes! This isn't Roy! What did I say? I didn't tell him you told me. I'm just saying. <laughs> just be like she would, you know. Besides, I should say our time is best spent gathering evidence to clear his name. With perfect timing, the bell to announce the start of class began to chime through the academy, throughout the academy, and we're like, Well, fuck! That whole story took an hour and I didn't even eat my lunch! Holmes returned to the classroom and to his assigned seat. Watson's story had given a deeper meaning to the eerie calm of his expression. Far from reassuring, seeing it only made my chest tighten. Never fear, Holmes. We won't stop until we prove your innocence. I wondered if I should have said anything. He surely would have preferred I kept to myself. Well, you know, are you really so confident? I am. I might not be able to do it alone, of course. But I'll have your help, too, so all will be well. <laughs> you never stop surprising, do you? Holmes's smile was only slight, and though I didn't know if his heart was in it, I took it as a mild victory. I knew then that I would do anything to see that smile grow. Oh, we so in love with him. After our classes had ended, the three of us bundled ourselves in coats and shuffled to the cold shuffled into the cold towards Holmes and Watson's Baker Street flat. You know I can't read. The police did little to hide their watchful eyes, and some were brazen enough to take their place along the street in plain sight. Police officers are certainly to be commended. I don't know if I could stand stock still in this weather. G good afternoon. You must be terribly chilly out here. Not at all. I'm pleased to be going about my job, ma'am. I hadn't expected a response of any kind, so I was uncertain what to say in turn. He continued instead. Uh, incidentally, a potential client came to visit you earlier, Mr. Holmes. Uh, thank you for informing me. He's very kind, isn't he? He is. Oh, you see him often patrolling along the street. 
I'd say he's the most polite of all the guards assigned to Holmes. I've noticed he always waits till we're finished a conversation before approaching us to say anything, too. We were now close enough that Hudson had come out to greet us, her enthusiasm reaching marvelous levels. Did you have a good day at school? Oh, and hello, Speezy! Hello, I do hope I'm not being a bother. Never, ever! And oh, and you have a visitor, Holmes. Do I? Indeed! He is the most lovely elderly gentleman. I noticed him being questioned by the guard outside and let him in for you. He mentioned a case of some kind. Something about finding a ring which belonged to his late wife. I see. I showed him upstairs and poured him some tea, but I don't want you to keep him waiting. We won't be long. Thanks, Hudson. I'm always happy to help, and no matter what happens to either of you, I will always remain by your side. And that means no giving up, all right, Holmes? I'm not certain anything up to this point has made me feel worse than knowing you're concerned for me. That's no way to treat someone who's worried about you, young man. <laughs> She's like 14. If you really want what's best for me, then treat me the same as you would any other day. I'll feel much better that way. He managed a somewhat troubled smile before going to meet his new client. And they're still going to Holmes, even though they think he's a murderer. Interesting. Oh my, he's much calmer than I was expecting. I wonder why. Could it be? Is it because you've been with him, Speezy? Ooh! The assistant in me is becoming thoroughly intrigued indeed. Simmer down! Watson and I weren't far behind Holmes. Simmer down, Hudson! Immediately upon reaching the first floor, we spotted the gentleman to whom Hudson had been referring. His back was bent with age, a walking stick acting more as support than his legs, and though we were indoors, he quivered as though the cold outside had followed him. Hmm. I suppose the, wor the world won't end if I humor you. Oh, what brings you here today, sir? Enough, Holmes. You can't speak that way to a client. No, it's quite all right. It's my ring, you see. A memento of your late wife, yes? Don't make me laugh. Even with circumstances as tense as they were, Holmes would never react with so much hostility towards a client. Something wasn't right, and I went to whisper to Watson my concerns. It's probably Sherlock in disguise. <laughs> if someone he knows in disguise is all I'm saying, you know. Watson, are those two acquainted? Not to my knowledge. I've never met him before. Oh, I certainly hope so without rude Holmes' is being. It's such a waste of a perfectly fine cup of tea, too. Well, that is a shame. Up I get then. Aged as he was, the gentleman seemed intent to first straighten himself in one quick motion. S sir please don't do that. What if you hurt your back? Uh, thank you for your concern, Miss Whitley. Oh, I see who you are now. What present- <laughs> I knew it! When it said a nice elderly gentleman, I was like, I wouldn't call Holmes Senior elderly, because I was just assuming it was him. And then, like, when we went in, he's like, ugh. I was like, okay, it's gotta be. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes is the master of disguise, yo. What possessed you to play the part of a client? Having a laugh at my expense, father. I fucking love Sherlock Holmes! I mean, I love Sherlock Holmes. Like, I fucking love Sherlock Holmes. But I love this Sherlock Holmes. This is just... This is great. Ugh. Oh. Ugh. Oh, the Sherlock nerd in me is just like... I mean, I was going to be like, inside of me is just squealing with delight. But I'm also doing that externally, so whatever. Mr. Holmes, what a delightful ruse. You had me completely fooled to the last second. Not me, I knew it. You truly are a dear, Miss Whitley. I can't remember the voice I gave him, but whatever. <laughs> like, Holmes's father had done away with the disguise entirely, and whilst he still sat, his posture was now perfectly upright and able. I, on the other hand, was not. You take that walking stick with you everywhere you go. I dare say you were inviting me to recognize you. It was merely a precaution. I didn't want anyone else to know I was coming to visit you. It appeared his visit was not under pleasant circumstances. His eyes grew very stern. Junior, this case is... I do not believe I was drawn into these circumstances because of you. If you believe otherwise, then I'm afraid you're severely mistaken. This case came to me. I have no desire to have your assistance in solving it. Um, as someone who's helping Holmes, I greatly desire your assistance. I'm just saying. Also, because I want you around more because you're handsome. 
<laughs> but Holmes, he's come here to help. Surely you could... Uh... I won't be changing my mind. And I would be pleased if you were to keep your nose out of it, Miss Whitley. Is this supposed to be Whitely? I've been saying her name. I've been saying her name wrong because it's like Whitely. I've probably been saying it and someone's literally losing their shit, but... It could be Whitely. Miss Whitely. I Okay. Miss Whitely just sounds... I don't like that. It doesn't sound right to me. So we're going to keep going with Miss Whitley. I just... <laughs> How many parts have we played? And I literally am like just all of a sudden looked at her name and went... You know, I'm just thinking maybe it was supposed to be Whitely. I'm not very smart. <laughs> I am very smart. But clearly after using my brain all day, I come here play these games and I can't read and I'm dumb. <laughs> like, I don't know. Wow. Anyway. I wasn't prepared for him to reject me so directly. Nothing is sure to convince me otherwise. So run along. If that is your position, then I shan't accept when you come crying for sympathy later. Hey, 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 don't be a dick to Holmes. You two look nothing alike. Like, it's just amazing how, like, they're like, it's like the normal anime version and almost the chibi version. You know what I mean? Like, it's not as bad as the chibi, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's almost like two different art styles. Like, I know, like, we're supposed to be younger kids. So we got to have the little ch chubby face, like little baby faces. But, like, it's, all, it's literally, like, two different games. And you're like, oh! It's like two different games that we put together. Like, there's something about the way they draw the older characters and the way they draw as kids that's just so different. It's weird to me. But anyway. I'd rather retire than come crying to you for anything. Very well. To be so stubborn about it is certainly like you. But I can't imagine you giving up the life of a detective just to avoid your dear old dad. Why is he so handsome? I can't even. And with my help lamentably unneeded, I shall run along as you requested. He stood and retired at a speed as to be gone as quickly as possible. Indeed. Holmes was presumably fine with this. He hadn't spared his father a glance, pretending as if the man were never there. Please wait, sir. Don't you have something important to tell him? Isn't that why you came here? Oh? What makes you so certain? Well... I must admit, it's mostly intuition, but I can't help but feel you and Holmes are rather like one another at heart. Holmes is being obstinate, and I should say your response to his obstinacy is equally obstinate. Is that what you see? Then you are very perceptive. You are handsome. <laughs> As I've noticed that you genuinely... And I've noticed that you genuinely care for him. You have my thanks for that. I... Well... Permit me to give you this. Sherlock reached within his inner pocket and produced a notebook, after which he opened it and handed me a single leaf of paper. What is it? Many moons ago, I was involved in bringing to light a criminal organization involved in selling stolen goods, written down as the identity of one particular man whose name was whispered alongside that group. Its leading members were taken into custody, and he himself managed to avoid capture due in part to cutting ties with them shortly before... I, however, have reason to believe his connections with them remain as strong as they ever were. I don't know what's happening. Do you remember the name Colonel Moran? How could I forget? Upon the question, the name came to me as fresh as the day I learnt it. I do recall the man who was murdered mentioning a colonel by name before his... Indeed, my instincts tell me this case has something to do with him. Though whether I'm correct or not, they already seem to seem content to have their eyes on me. They go by the name of Spellbound, and it won't be an easy task to obtain a lead on them. But should you find the man written on that paper, then we might learn more about the trap Holmes has been lured in, yes? You are perceptive. Yes. If only I were able to act freely to resolve this mystery, I'm ashamed of my inability to do much more. Nonsense. I should do all I can to help him. I'm certain Watson will do the same. Th thank you for your help, sir. My son is very fortunate to have been surrounded by the likes of you and William. In a sense, I fear that he'll never have it in him to count me among those who he consider he would consider so close. <laughs> With a perverse old man like me for a father, it's little wonder my son became the man he is today. Oh, Holmes. Mr. Holmes? 
For as much of a challenge it may be in our uncertain future, I hope you will always come to his rescue when he needs someone most. Does this mean in Watson's route we get to meet Watson? I am so excited for that! I absolutely will, sir, but again, I don't want to meet Arsene Lupin because I need the code realize Lupin in my head. I nodded emphatically to reassure him as much. With that, I believe I've long overstayed my welcome. I shall be off. He did not forget to assume his disguise as an elderly gentleman once more before then. Even now knowing his true identity, I was impressed with how convincing it was. Well then, I'm pretty sure it's... <laughs> like, white, we. <laughs> When I was reading, I was reading it like Whittley, and I'm like, we'll just call her Whitley, like instead of Whitley, but it's probably Miss Whiteley. <laughs> I'm so fucking stupid. <laughs> there was some, uh, somebody, okay, nobody has commented in on any of the videos to this point. Well, at the point I'm recording this. That there is going to be someone that's going to be like, it's Whiteley, and I'm going to be like, look, I figured it out three days later. Like literally, f what, 15, 16 parts later? It's like 16 hours into the game. I'm sorry. We're calling her Miss Whitley because that's what we've been calling her from the beginning and that's what I'm going with. So I changed her to... Okay, you know what? She was um, originally Emily Whiteley and she's now Spacey Whitley. I changed her last name, okay? Just like I changed her first name. You just have to fucking deal with it. <laughs> it's going to be forever in my head like I'm such an idiot. Anyway. Well then, until we until next we meet Miss Whitley. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so glad I wasn't Miss Whittley. And <laughs> someone's like, it's it's Whitley. And then he was gone. They truly are alike, I thought quite comfortably. Obstinacy wasn't the only trait they shared. They both made a poor show of it, but I could see how deeply they loved one another. Oh, it's adorable. I returned to the room where the boys waited, and the first thing I did was pass along the information Mr. Holmes had given me. The topic of Spellbound naturally came first, followed by the name on the paper. Watson was the first to read it aloud. Regulus Acton. Oh no, you can't contact him. Regulus is in the period cube. <laughs> uh, oh. My assumption is when you watch games, you've watched all the prior ones I've played before. Otherwise, it makes no sense. Because that I'm referencing games that we've played already. Or are currently playing. I mean, I'm... At this point, I'm, I think period... No, period cube's already wrapped up by this point. Um, anyway. Well, his surname does him no favors. He sounds as if he were born to be a villain. I, I don't know if it's right to assume too much with just his name. I imagine any information Mr. Holmes would come across to be quite credible, however. And he spared no effort to pass it along to us. We may very well have to have the lead we need to come that much closer to the truth. Let's go, Holmes. It's worth seeing if this worth seeing if this information opens any leads. Contrary to his usual engagement, Holmes remained silent throughout the entire discussion. I clenched my fists. This isn't like you at all, Holmes. Your father brought this to our attention because he believes you can solve the case. Because he believes in your ability. Bah. Holmes furrowed his brow. To my relief, it didn't seem to be one of displeasure, but of deep thought which was pleasantly familiar to me. I imagined he was searching for a way within himself to overcome his hesitations and accept the gift he had been given. It took some time, but eventually we were presented with an opportunity to visit Mr. Acton's mansion. We probably should have stopped here, but whatever. Watson and I went together as Holmes was still under police watch. He appeared unsettled by the decision to continue on without him, but what other choice did we have? We had picked quite a day to visit, the weather was pleasant, to be sure, but his staggeringly, ma staggeringly massive mansion and garden were active with guests, drink, and laughter. No one will know. Let's crash the party. Woo! This was according to our plans. Holmes's father made certain we were aware of the wine and spirits party that was to be hosted today, as well as that the general public were also extended an invitation. So it's a smart mansion to go with a smart name, is it? Oh, it's beautiful. And we're so blessed that he happened to hold this right when we needed him, aren't we? We didn't have to go through any trouble at all to get here. We're off to a lovely start. Oh, this isn't going to go well. Indeed, we were blessed, but we now had to find a potential lead to Spellbound. Whether that would prove to be the more difficult part of the plan was to be seen, probably. Look! You see that fellow over there? I'll bet he's the one. But he's got loads of bodyguards around him. Getting close could be difficult. 
So it seems. There has to be some way of going about it, though. With a glass of champagne from a passing servant now in hand, I racked my brain for one potential solution after the next. I become quite occupied in thought, so much so that I failed to notice in time a fairly inebriated guest stumbling into a table. The impact had caused the table to sway a significant amount, and a walking stick that had been propped against it fell to the ground. A neatly dressed elderly woman, presumably its owner, was the one to reach for it. Before she could, however, a young man next to her had picked it up in her place. There we are, for you, madam. Oh my, thank you kindly. Please, it was no trouble at all. Hmm, he sounds very... familiar. Sherlock? Shortly thereafter, the man walked directly to where Mr. Acton and his group were. Or he's one of the, uh, dudes, the bad guys. Uh, you're all right, Spacey. Uh, that champagne might spill if you weren't too careful. Uh, uh, yes, thank you. I'd become distracted once more, and the second I averted my gaze from our target... Oh no, Mr. Acton's gone. How? He was right there a moment ago. I surveyed the guests to look for the other young man as well, and my instincts had not failed me, for he was also nowhere to be seen. We should find him quickly. He can't have gone far. Right. We began an immediate and frantic search for the man in question. Okay, that's not going to look crazy. Frantically running around. Everyone else is chill. We should be like, okay, okay. Chill, walk calmly, arm in arm. La -la, do you see? I don't see what's going on. Racing through the mansion is not going to be... Whoa, 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 whoa. This is the same... This man lives in the museum? This is the same background from the museum. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this part up here and we'll continue the search for Mr. Acton in the next part. So I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.